In this video, I want to show you how you can start a profitable catfish farming business and become an employer of labor. Why should you have to start this business? It's actually uh, a business that has a steady market. Catfish uh, business uh, is a one that has ready and available market. The catfish thrives in various waters. You know, it's, it, ha it ha is very, very adaptable. It adapts to various water conditions and can survive. Uh, it's a very sustainable protein source for a lot of people and so that's why the, the, the demand is high. There's employment opportunities in, in this business. By starting this business, you are creating jobs. And this business actually is an, agric is an agricultural, the, one of the agricultural businesses and it attracts government incentives and it has a potential for expansion. Uh, how to start this business? The first thing you need to do if you want to start this business is to carry out market research and that involves uh, understanding the demand for catfish in your area, the area you want to start this business, identify your, to uh, your, your target market like restaurants, fish markets, local consumers. Also when doing that, you now need to have a business plan. For a business plan, it outline, you outline your business goals, targets, financial projections, operational plans and also you do what is called your SWOT analysis. Look at your strength, your weakness, your threats, and and uh, the advantage of the business, the strengths of the business, and how you are you are going to achieve this business. Your financial analysis, profit and loss projections, and all that. So this is involved in the market research and planning. The second step you need to take is to choose a suitable location. Now there's a site requirement for uh, the catfish business. You need to select a site with good water availability and quality water quality. You need to ensure that the location has a stable supply. Or, or of uh, energy sources for aeration and for water pump you need water actually you need to also look at the soil topography you need to go for soil with low permeability to prevent water loss okay also gentle slopes are ideal for drainage and water management the third step you need to take is to obtain the necessary licenses and permit you need to contact your local authorities to acquire any necessary permit or licenses for operating a farm a fish the fish farm Register your business with the Corporate Affairs Commission of your home country so that you can have the full backing of the law to do this business. The first step, the first step you need to take in starting this business is to set up the infrastructure. And in doing that, you need to have either you can be 18 pounds. If you are going for 18 pounds, you can you need to ensure that the depth is about 1.5 to 2 meters. Design the ponds with a proper slope for easy harvesting, easy harvesting of your the mashed fish. Alright, if you are going for concrete tanks. Use 5 to 10 cubic meters for small or medium operation. They offer better quality, uh, better water quality, and also better control of the quality of the water. So you can as well use cage system, use floating cages with a minimum of depth, minimum depth of 2 meters for larger scale farming. So you need to ensure that you have the good, the, you need to decide on the uh, infrastructure, on the type of pond, fish pond you want to set up. There are different types of fish pond. Decide, decide on the one you want. And the one you can that is based on your on your budget and the area that you are doing this business. Okay, please kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have to do so. so. Turn on the notification bell so you can be alerted when I post new videos. All right. So now the the fifth step you need to take is to now stock your fingerlings. Fingerlings are the small uh, features that you need to that you start with. All right. Okay. So you need to the fingerlings should be sourced from uh, certified hatcheries so that the, to, uh, you prevent disease. Uh, if you, you prevent uh, getting disease uh, infested the uh, fingerlings. Choose fingerlings with a minimum size of 5 to 10 cm. Stock at a density of 1 to 2 fish per cubic meter in tanks or 1 to 2 fish per uh, meter square in, in ponds. Alright? So, you also now need to look at uh, the water and air quality management. Okay? And that involves, if you are looking at the water source, use clean, unpolluted water from boreholes or river or rainwater. Regularly test, you need to regularly test the water, things like the pH of the water. You ensure that you are using your the you are maintaining a pH of 6.5 to 8, 8. ammonia uh, below uh, ammonia level below 0 0.5 milligram per liter, nitrate level below 0 0.2 milligram per liter, nitrate now below 20 milligram per liter. The temperature maintain about 25 to 30 degrees C. Right, that is room like room temperature. So we also look at the filtration and treatment of the water so you need to set up a filtration system if necessary and consider using a uv sterilizers or zone to reduce pathogens growth of pathogens all right so the seventh step you need to take now you need to uh, look at your feeding and nutrition of the fish all right so because if you do not feed the fish well they will not grow 
all right well use high quality commercial pellets starting with high protein uh, content for young fish like the 12, 12, direct to 40 percent and reduce you can start reducing as they grow feeding schedule you feed three times two to three times in a day monitor the feeding response and adjust amounts to prevent waste so uh, you need to feed them appropriately so that you don't overfeed and you don't underfeed supplementation you can also add, consider adding vitamins and minerals to the diet especially if you're using homemade feeds so the eighth step you need to take is health management all right you need to ensure help appropriate health management so and that involves disease prevention you need to monitor uh, regularly monitor the uh, common disease such as uh, columnaris okay and even uh, some parasitic infection uh, sarcolagnosis and maintain a clean environment and use approved medications or vaccines so also you need to also consider biosecurity biosecurity means actually in, in some people in, uh, invading or uh, compromising on the security of your fish pond and in, in, in other words and inflicting some damage like okay so i imp implementing measures such as disinfecting the equipment controlling visitors having access to your fish ponds and quarantine new stock all right so this is has to do with the health management of the fish so also we need to look at now uh, when they are, your fish have not grown to the level you need to now consider harvesting and marketing so for market for harvesting you are actually harvesting your fish when they have gotten to a weight of 500 grams to one kilogram right from between 500 grams to one kilogram when the, the catfish weighs that then it is due for harvesting so it depends on the market preference it depends on what the market the, you are going to supply they want the size of the want the size they want so you might want to use nets or uh, sains for harvesting so the pro processing you might also want to consider processing the fish before maybe before selling for that is like value addition consider options like smoking the fish then uh packaging for retail so also marketing channels you need to have your marketing channels in doing this marketing channel you ought to have done this in your business plan okay the rest sales to consumer you can sell to consumers you can sell to businesses local businesses the local market you can also partner with uh, restaurants and re other retailers okay even hotels you can also supply to hotels to uh local consumers as well all right so uh now ensure financial management good financial management so in financial management two basic things are required record keeping and financial management now keep detailed record of feed usage the feed that you are using the growth rate of the fish water quality parameters and sales parameters so you need to use this to analyze your performance and make informed decision very very important the growth rate water quality feed usage all right also the financial management you need to monitor cash and monitor cash flow manage expenses and plan for reinvestment and expansion because when you do well financially in the business you might want to expand operations to continue to grow all right so now you if you have staff or even if you are doing this business alone you need to ensure that you are always keeping your skills updated am i attending workshops webinars or training programs on aquaculture or engage with local agricultural extension services for ongoing support for you all right so in that case you need to now keep continuing to monitor and evaluate your growth by checking and tracking your performance metrics like growth rates feed conversion rates and survival rates of the fish and you know you need to ensure continuous improvement by conducting regular evaluations to adjust management practices and improve efficiencies all right so uh starting a fish farming business requires dedication knowledge of aquaculture practices and strategic uh, approach to market your products effectively so by following these steps that i've shown you you can establish a sustainable and profitable catfish farming business if you want me to do a detailed uh, business plan on catfish for you or any other business i have uh, i actually will do a professional business plan for you that you can use to even to seek loan from financial institutions all right so uh if you want that kindly send me an email my email detail is in my is in the description box of this video or the contact section of this youtube channel also if you want to join our free telegram channel you can do that so you can meet and interface with other other business minded and uh, wealth growth minded people so till i come away next time with another useful content do have a wonderful day ahead bye